Thank you for tuning into the Small Business Development Series. The Small Business Development Series is provided by the District in Quincy, Illinois, and brought to you through a grant by the Illinois Main Street Program. My name is Travis Brown. I'm the Director of Business Development for Acoustic Design in Quincy, Illinois, and we're happy to be a partner of the districts in providing this webinar series. Today, we're going to talk about your business online. What does your business online mean? We're going to talk about a few different elements of this. We're going to talk about your website, some e-commerce, and some social media. Now, it's important to know that you've got to have a website. Anymore, a website is as essential as a phone number. Businesses connect to you via any device. You've got to have a mobile website because that's how businesses are being found in today's economy. Clients no longer reach for the yellow pages or wander up Main Street aimlessly. They're targeted and looking for your business. Whether you're a plumber, an electrician, a contractor, or a retail business, 90% of offline purchases are researched online before that purchase is made. People don't even dial 411 or the operator anymore because everyone seems to carry a smartphone and so their first instinct is to reach for their phone and do a Google search to find your business. So having that business website is critical for every business. There's some things that your business website has to have as well. You've got to have key information about your business. More than just your contact number and your address, you've got to have information about what it is that you do. Now, with search engine optimization, it's imperative that you're putting as much good information on your homepage as possible. It used to be that Google wanted a bunch of pages and a bunch of content all over the place. Now what Google seems to be looking for is good content on the homepage followed up by relevant supporting content on your interior pages. It's important that you have a good narrative for your business. I'm sure most entrepreneurs and small business owners have an elevator speech. That elevator speech should be written down and in your homepage content somewhere. The other thing that you've got to do is make sure that your website is representative of your business. What I mean by that is if you've got an upscale restaurant, you want to make sure that your website reflects that. If you've got a retail store that's in a historic building and you carry a lot of specialty products, you don't want a website that looks very templated and very modern and very uh, uniform. You want something that reflects what it is that your business offers. That customer experience needs to translate from your website to your store and vice versa. So talking about your business website a little bit more, there's some other things that you're going to want to make sure you consider. Your website needs to be responsive. And by responsive, I don't mean that you need to be attached to your website and responding to every customer need. What I mean by responsive is that it's a mobile-friendly website. Uh, you can see this little graphic down here in the corner where the same information is actually uh, formatted based on the screen that it's being looked at. That's what a responsive website is. It's a mobile-friendly version of your website. Uh, a number of years ago, as smartphones were becoming more and more prevalent, people were actually building mobile websites. And if you looked at the website on a mobile device, the URL actually changed, or the, the, the quincypubliclibrary.com would actually become m.qplibrary.whatever, and that was a mobile version of their website. Now, through this technology, websites are becoming responsive, so the exact same website is actually, you're looking at content that is the exact same on, on the back end, whether you're looking at it on a large monitor, a tablet, or a smartphone. This makes sure that your website is incredibly user-friendly. You also want to make sure it has some SEO juice. And by juice, what I mean is you want this to be something that Google is going to pick up. 
you want that narrative right there on your home page. You want the content to be informative and expressive of what your business actually offers. And you want it to be user friendly. More than just being able to pull it up on your user device, you want the navigation to be coherent. You want the flow of information to be positive and something that your business customers are going to find appealing. Make sure that you're doing some market research. And I would strongly urge you to not just use a quick template based. Make sure that you're working with some firm to develop a website that's going to be beneficial to your business. Websites really are becoming an investment for your business. As I mentioned, over 85, close to 90% of offline purchases are researched online. So you really want to make sure that your website is a very good representation for your business and it really should be something that you invest in. I wanted to talk a little bit, as we mentioned, about e-commerce. E-commerce is really becoming the way of the future for retail-based businesses. But even service-based businesses are finding ways to capitalize on e-commerce opportunities. As I mentioned, over 85% of sales are researched online prior to a purchase. Whether you're buying a car, hiring a plumber, or buying a couch, you're going to go online and look at all of your options so that you're an informed consumer. This is great for consumers, but it's a challenge for business because you have to be able to be found by these customers. You need to make sure that your website is found by Google, that it's friendly, easy to navigate, and direct people to how they can purchase your, your goods or your services, whether that's online or in store. Sites like PayPal and Square are really helping make the process of mobile payments very, very easy, or online e-commerce payments. You can set up a Square store now and actually sell your products through Square's website. Uh, PayPal has options where you can embed the, the payment options right there into your own website. And with most websites nowadays, payment options are becoming very, very easy. And embedding your products or selling your products online is, is very easy. And even a, a novice can do it once the site has been developed and, and built. And so making sure that you've given your business the opportunity to capture those sales when your brick and mortar store is closed is going to be critical for any business. We also wanted to talk about social media. There's a number of different outlets out there. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn are certainly almost a requirement uh, in today's world. Making sure that you've got some sort of presence on each of those is very important. Uh, even for a retail-based business or even for a service-based business, it really is becoming a way of life and something that's almost as important as having a phone number. The other thing to think about is video. And I bring up video because YouTube is the second most popular search engine in the world, right behind Google. It's not Yahoo, it's not Bing, it's YouTube. And so if you can give people a behind the scenes look into your business, or you can find a way to incorporate video, you're really going to be able to increase your online presence. The biggest thing, as I mentioned, though, is determine what outlets fit your business best. Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn are almost the requirement. YouTube is great. But when I say determine what fits your business, there are a number of different opportunities out there. As you can see, based on your business, your platform, your, your capabilities, there's a number of different ways that you can have this online conversation. And really, that's what social media is. It's, it's a conversation between either individuals or, in our case, businesses to customers. And so we want to make sure that we're picking that right venue. If we're a record store, maybe having something that is uh, more geared towards music uh, would be a good idea. If we're a photography store, Instagram is going to be something that is almost a requirement at that point. So you've really got to go through, do your research, figure out what your customers are utilizing and what is going to be most beneficial to your business. So 
Encourage your fans, and especially your raving fans, to give you reviews. Whether it's on Yelp, whether it's on Google+, whether it's on Facebook, making sure that your fans are connected to you or your customers are connected to you in this online world is going to be important. It's going to help you get more and more customers and have them feel comfortable with you before you've ever met them. Along with this is don't be afraid of negative feedback. It's a gateway to a conversation. And what I mean by that is you need to look at negative feedback as an opportunity for a positive conversation. I've met a number of businesses that either do not turn their comments on or don't get into the social media world because they're afraid that somebody might have a bad experience and post about it. Um, you can't let fear dictate whether or not you're going to have a social media platform. You really need to incorporate as many as, as you have time for because each one is a potential gateway to customers. And being afraid of negative feedback is throwing the baby out with the bath water. What I have found is that it gives you an opportunity in front of the world to publicly show how you handle maybe some difficult situations. If you're a restaurant and a, a customer goes online and writes a bad review, it gives you the opportunity to start a conversation and say, well, we're really sorry that this happened. Could you expand a little bit more? Or, hey, we're sorry... Yes, that night was, was not our best night. We had some new staff, our chef was sick, whatever the case may be. Or simply to just say, you know what, we're sorry we let you down. We apologize. We hope that you give us an opportunity to earn your business again. That really makes a great impression with the other people that are going to read that. Sometimes it's not even about what that customer is saying. It's what the other people viewing the conversation will say. The other thing that i found when it comes to this feedback issue is how quick your raving fans are to jump in and defend you. It's great when I see clients rising to the defense of a company that hasn't even had the opportunity to post a comment yet. And this happens all the time. And so the more you get your fans to engage with what you're doing, the more those negative issues won't even pop up because the positive just will outweigh the negative. The other thing is have a plan. Make sure that you've got a plan, whether it's for social media, whether it's for e-commerce, whether it's for your website. Make sure that this is part of your business plan. This is all a great communication tool and a wonderful avenue to connect and engage in a conversation with your clients. But you've got to have a plan for how to do it. As we saw a couple slides ago, there are so many opportunities out there that can take you down paths that will, will eat up a lot of time and energy that may be better spent somewhere else. So make sure you've got a plan in place and you're communicating that plan to everybody that's participating. All of your employees should know that you have a Facebook page and you want your clients to leave you positive feedback. All of them should know if you've got a Yelp review that you would like them to fill out. And all of them should know what your website address is. Making sure that your clients and your employees are connected to your plan will help ensure that that plan is successful. Um, you know, it, it's always make a, <laughs> follow the plan um, and keep it simple. And those two things are really going to be impactful for your business. Again, I want to thank you for taking the time to go through the Small Business Development Series. My name is Travis Brown. I'm the Director of Business Development here at Recusic Design. We are thrilled to be a partner of the district in bringing these webinar series to you. We hope that you continue to go through these webinar series. And if you've got topics that you'd like to see directed at this, please do not hesitate to contact us. We're happy to hear your feedback and eager to continue to provide great educational opportunities. We'd also like to thank the Illinois Main Street Program for the grant that made these webinars possible.